Hey, Stephen Andrew Bolin here. I'm with the Proverbs 2717 YouTube channel. I have one of my, well, actually, tomorrow you are my very first interviewee. You're the first one I interviewed. So I'm super excited Woo! to have you back. Yep. Um, you are a published author of Juvenescence Outdoors. Do you want yeah. to show everybody your book? Yeah, sure, sure. Here it is, fifth edition. I'll put it to the side in my head a little okay yeah. that looks great that is the fifth edition that's the edition we recommend everybody to go get um i understand yeah. that since the last time we met you have actually made some updates to your website um now there's an events and news yeah. section is that right yes well i've updated the events and news section and i've joined together some of the video um marketing that i had into the website so users of the website can understand more what the book is about and i've added some photography of me doing the activities with my children so that, you can see cool. um, a real life connection my favorite update though has been the blog i am now trying to expand more into showing people the book in action so you can read the blog there about me taking my children out um, and just make some connections there, yeah. And I have to ask, um, this is a little off script, but you are a mother of seven. Okay. And in addition to being a mother of seven, you're also yes. co-authoring several things in the works right now. How do you have time to also blog? Like that is mind blowing to me. <laughs> um, ever since I was a little girl, I just, like to write um, even from the time i was in grade school um i received awards for writing it just always came naturally to me you know some people like art some people like martial arts some people do particularly well at other athletic things uh, writing just always came easy to me so as i was mentioning you know writing comes very easily to me and now as a mother when i'm doing laundry washing dishes and whatnot. Um, I kind of make these stories up, you know, in my head if I want to write something for fiction and for nonfiction, it comes to me. And then I just put it on paper later, you know, paper is my canvas. Um, you know, some people can make artwork very easily. Uh, writing just comes to me very easily. So, yeah. All right. Um, so last time we went into a lot of detail about where they can find your book and you can go ahead and plug your website again and tell them how to find your book but in addition to that we didn't mention last time that you have an ebook for just ten dollars i'd like them to be able to know where to get the e -book. yes and we also didn't discuss that you have a discounted book for tight budget families that you offer yes so let me explain the different editions and pricing Absolutely. And one thing I've developed over the years on my website is a link that says shop. And on that link, it will describe every different edition that's available, the vendors you can get it at, because the book is available from vendors like Walmart or Barnes and Noble or Amazon. But you can also email me directly for an ebook. So I do email those directly. And I use PayPal for a um, merchant exchange of money. And those who own the fourth edition, I created a something called a booster package. So if you want your fourth edition to match the fifth edition, you can purchase the, the changes of the pages. And they fit in there very easily. It's not awkward and whatnot. But the most recent edition with the most number of activities and I, I think I finally mastered it here, is this um, fifth edition that I'm holding here. Yeah, and this one is available on Amazon. Um, I own the copyrights for the fifth edition, so that's on Amazon. But uh, fourth edition you can find in many vendors um, because the fourth edition what is also jointly owned by a publishing company. So. There's some options there, but to simplify all that, if you go to juvenescence 
outdoors.com. There's a handy link. That's a shop. It explains everything in writing real, real easy. Mm -hmm. And the fifth edition is the one that I have. I know you can't see it because of my green screen, but it is a very easy sure. read and it is very thin and it is slammed full of activities that I cannot yes. wait to get into. Yes, and I purposely created it very concise because it's targeted for caretakers. Um, that's the audience that this is fit for. And one thing I know about a, as a one thing I know about as a caretaker is it's very difficult to find planning time. So the book is a pocket guide to help you minimize your planning time so you can max, maximize the time that you're outside. You know, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that inspired me to write this book was I was overwhelmed by leafing through internet websites and magazines and brochures and all this volume of literature about what I potentially could eventually go outside and do. It was just overwhelming. You know, as caretakers, we have so many things to do, but this book makes it so that you can get to the heart of the book and help you plan. But I also put some uh, other important supporting information out there because I I didn't want to just like throw people in the outdoors, like here, go do some stuff, you know? Right. Um, there's some other safety information, <laughs> right? Yeah, there's some other safety information that um, is important in here. Uh, where to find green space, because some people, they live um, in areas where it's very difficult to find green space. Like where would they even go to kick a ball? Those are real things for people. So that's in there. So it's, it's packed full of information, but it's not so thick that you're overwhelmed, you, you know? Yes. Um, and I love it for that reason, because yes. I've been able to read it twice so far. And me finding enough time to read a book, period, yes. is a miracle from our Father in Heaven. So for me to be yeah. able to read this book twice, <laughs> it is a light read. But it is so beneficial and packed of information. Yes. I recommend it to everybody. Um, another good well, thing. thank you. Thank you. No, you're welcome. And I, I sincerely mean that. Um, you mentioned that this book is great for single parents. I have to agree. Um, tell us why you think, which I already agree. Why do you think this book is so effective for single parents? Yeah, I think it's great for single parents, especially because it gives you alternatives to expensive entertainment. So a lot of times families on budgets and of course single parents are your number one community that are on very slim budgets at times. They are left out of opportunities for entertainment and leisure. Mm -hmm. This book helps you to find ways that are inexpensive to enjoy time with your children. And one section of this book, it has a cost analysis and you can go down that section and find free activities and inexpensive activities. So it helps to jog your memory and reinstill classic types of fun that the poorest families for hundreds of years have done to, to entertain themselves. You know, um, even children during the Great Depression had forms of outdoor recreation for fun. And a lot of those have become forgotten because technology, as much as I like it, I like my video games too, but uh, it's kind of ballooned to the point. <laughs> yeah, technology has ballooned to the point where a lot of families have forgotten how to have fun in a very inexpensive and classic way. And my book is with the goal of returning families to these traditional forms of fun. And, and single parents can jump right in to that and have fun. And, you know, it is so awesome for low income families because it does provide cheap or yes. even free activities. But even if you're from a very wealthy, successful family, like it's time to start unplugging again because society is starting to take a dip in the wrong direction. Oh, yes. And even wealthy families can benefit from these natural, fun outdoor activities. Yes. And in my foreword, I cite a study that was done. It was in 2012, so a lot of people would say, oh, that's an old statistic, but honestly, I'm going to quote the statistic because nothing has changed about the statistic. It was actually reported 
that children on average spend less time outdoors than prison inmates. So there are people advocating for prison inmates to have leisure time, which is good. It's good for people's mental health. You know, when, when people are quarantined in any kind of indoor space, whether you're a prisoner or not, uh, your mental health can suffer, your physical health can suffer, your emotional health can suffer. And children suffer too. We don't connect them with oxygen, free space, very terrains, the outdoors in general. And it just shows like this is something that no matter how wealthy you are, um, or gadgets you have, you still have an inborn need to go play outside and just enjoy that fresh air, enjoy the leisure time outside as well. Absolutely. Um, and another great point uh, that we want to make with this book is that it really does help create family cycles and routines so that the next yes. time you have that in your head already, you don't have to think of something completely new. Um, tell, tell us about that. Some of the cycles right. and routines it's helped you develop. Sure. So when I set about putting outdoor recreation in a catalog to capture it once and for all in an easy format, I had in mind to create a book that did not have to be weeded out of your bookshelf. This is not a book that's like, okay, we'll use it for his first birthday or their 15th birthday. This is a forever book. And part of making it a forever book means I made a method within the book of outdoor recreation that you could return to over and over. This is about creating a lifestyle of going outdoors, not one time, not just for a special event, but to have something to draw on when it's time to plan reunions, birthdays, vacations, special days, your holidays, whatever it is that you want to do for creating those special memories as a family or as a caretaker in general, you can go back to this book over and over and eventually you feel that rhythm you know you, you like if you have an afternoon or an evening with your child or let's say you want to get together with the grandparents or a ministry activity uh this book you can just go right to it find out you know hey what are we going to do when we have 20 minutes later just to uh, kick it back outside or our family reunion is coming up what are three activities that we want to have to bond and engage and, and not be like this in front of the cell phones at the picnic table? <laughs> yes. So, yeah, it's really about a lifestyle of, of being outdoors. Absolutely. Well, and this book is for non-believers and believers and any denomination of believers can use it. But especially if you're new to the messianic circles and you're starting to do the biblical feasts, um, especially with feasts like Sukkot, where you're literally outside on a very long camping trip. Yes. And you're like, wow, okay, so I'm obedient, yeah. Lord, here I am, but what am I going to do with these kids for all these days? Get the book. Get the book. Yes, and one thing, I'm glad you brought up Sukkot. That's a great time of year to be outdoors. Fall's my favorite season. I love to be with my children out there. And one thing about this book, too, is it's good for all seasons. So if you're a person who celebrates Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or um, whatever holiday you have in the winter, you can work that in. Um, it is for interfaith communities. You don't have to be a particular religion or denomination to draw on this book because, you know, outdoor recreation is one of the most um, fundamental forms of play in the human experience. Um, yeah. From the oldest ancient cultures to modern ones, being outdoors and playing is part of every culture's written history and pictorial history as well. It, it's, it's in archeology, span we see it everywhere. So absolutely, you don't have to be um, of any particular culture or background to enjoy this book, yeah. Awesome. Now, um, okay, so this book is perfect for also reliving old family type activities um, and building activities that you yes. can reminisce on in the future. Do you want to give us some examples of how you've been able to apply that directly to your life using your own book? 
Yeah, sure. So it's very common in families to create photo albums. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we go through the album and oh, look at Johnny when he was three years old. He's so cute. You know, pictures bring back memories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But one thing I've noticed in using this book is that when I touch particular outdoor recreation objects, it draws up a memory of a particular time when I was outdoors with somebody or my children doing these activities. It, it really is a way of bonding and creating memories. Um, that's for touch. You know, when we touch objects, we remember, we recall. Everybody has family heirlooms that they pass down and you tell the stories to your children. Oh, I sat on my grandfather's knees and you know we read this book together but outdoor recreation is an extension of that too you know you can touch a badminton racket you can touch a football you can touch some object and really connect and say i remember when my mom and i or my dad and i or my uncle my aunt etc and i did such and such a great way to create those um, family ties and bonds yes. yeah now, and also it is so nice to be able to pass like a photograph down from your grandmother to the parent, to you, to your kids, to your grandkids. That's wonderful. But why not learn activities yeah. that you can pass down through the generations? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a more physical way to connect um, these activities that are multi-generational. Yes. And your book is full of these activities. Juvenescence Outdoor is, is full of activities that you can pass on. Absolutely. I really put a big effort into data mining a bunch of resources from different cultures to put them in this book. I wanted to know everything that was out there and get cataloged because before I wrote this book, this was information that was previously all over the place. And, you know, I'm I'm really big on organization. I feel more calm in my personal envi environment when my objects are organized, but I also feel calmer when I have organized information. And that's what I really try to do in this book for a lot of caretakers, to take all that information floating around us, condense it into a book that's easy to use, and pass it on to people so that it can become a blessing for them and something they can draw on as caretakers. And caretakers is a very broad word. You know, mm -hmm. some of us are caretaker ministry. It doesn't necessarily have to be only like biological relatives. And I'm a firm believer in family first. Uh, but this book is also good for people who do therapeutic recreation or ministry events. Um, or people who are familiar with event programming. They can draw on this resource quickly to create itineraries for people that they minister to or that they work with, you know, gatherings take on so many forms from, for so many reasons. And, and this book is useful in all those contexts. I would have to totally agree with that. Um, but, you know, another great aspect of it is that it really is a great book for family healing, um, from families healing from any kind of trauma, mm -hmm. but especially death. And that's something that you have come to know firsthand through this book. Um, how has it helped your family heal? So the way this book has helped us in creating a lifestyle of outdoor recreation has also extended to us healing from a tragic event in our family. And particularly because it gave us a sense of who we are because it's who we were mm -hmm. and continuing those traditions with outdoor recreation helped to keep us intact. It helped us feel solid and have a root in another way. Of course, our faith in a creator is a foundation, but creamy's memories through play is another way that people bond and feel anchored. You know, there's a saying that says the family that plays together stays, stays together. together. Yep. And Traditionally, this stays together. And, and traditionally, that saying is the family that prays together stays together, which is true. But it's also true about play. Because one of our most basic needs from the time that we're an infant is to play. 
we have a need to play. You can see that from baby's first need to grab stuff and explore. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's one of our basic needs. So keeping that need met for my children and enjoying each other's company was a way of keeping us um, glued together. And, and that was really nice. That is nice. Um, and I would recommend it definitely to yeah. anybody, other people going through family traumas of any kind, and you're looking for healing. Yeah. Um, you've made a big family move and the kids aren't adjusting well to it. And you feel like you just can't connect yeah. to them right now. And you can't relate to what they're going through. Go get this book online. If you can't afford the paper copy, get the ebook for $10 and find some activities that you can take your kids and go create more memories mm -hmm. that you guys can bond mm -hmm. over and heal yes. over and come back together. And, you know, to me, I love the nature and being able to go play together as a family out in God's creation is to me, I think one of the most mm -hmm. wonderful forms of worship. And it's one of the most innocent forms of activity yes. play in this day and age. Yes. Yes. Oh, absolutely. It's definitely G rated. You know, you don't have to worry about like when you pick up a movie for the family, you're, you're trying to, oh, my book's upside down. Sorry. Uh, you know, you don't have to scan the book. I mean, this is classic, like you said, innocent fun. I, I don't see this being a bad fit for anyone looking for wholesome fun. It, it really is wholesome fun and it connects uh, children outdoors in a way that organized sports can't, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking organized sports, but it also is not, organized sports is not accessible to all families. Homeschooling families in many districts of the country don't get permission to enter into um, joint enrollment into public schools. So if you're looking for a way to do some organized activities, with your children, this book will really help if you're a homeschooling family as well. Yeah, and even if you have older kids who are maybe like preteens and you know, 13, 14, 15, yeah. and you want them to go do something, but you're trying to live a more righteous lifestyle and you don't have time to check every movie in the house mm. and video game for violence and what its rating is, give them the copy of right. this book and right. tell them to go outside and wish them the best of luck because everything in this book is wholesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you bring that up because I use the word adolescent in this book because this is not only for little children like toddler age or infants. This is from birth to adulthood. You can fill this. You can use this as a caretaker and actually you can use it for adults, too. Um, I have some people that I've networked with, yeah, that have used this book in senior citizen homes as well um, mm -hmm. and with therapeutic patients. So so that can be um, used in that setting. But let me go back to the word adolescent is there are plenty of activities in here for teenagers when you want to unplug them. And mm -hmm. I even have grouped activities. So if you want to look by theme, like really wild adventure stuff, I've pulled out all the activities that are wild um, sorts of things like ATV ra racing and more um, like jet skiing, things like that, that your teenager or older teenager might want to do. So I'm glad you brought that up because this is definitely good for when, you know, you take that phone away from the teenager and say, all right, time to go outside. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. I want to make sure like uh, holiday season is coming upon us quickly for many and Christmas yeah. time would be a perfect time to get this book and to share it with your loved ones and to give them something that I bet they've never got before. Um, so people keep that in mind. Yes. But, but also you have book two in the works. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So two things I want to say before that is um, the holidays are a good time to buy it. Usually around Black Friday, I run a coupon. So if you go to the website, juvenescenceoutdoors.com, on my banner um, around Black Friday, around Thanksgiving, you'll see a coupon code. You can plug it in um, for some percentage off. So, so look for that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, giving this as a gift is really good too. I, I agree with that. 
buying this around the holiday season is good too because in this book are plenty of activities to help you connect um, with the outdoors and take your the children that you care for outdoors during winter. So, you know, there's a myth a lot of times that the only time you can go outside is, you know, the middle of summer because children are out of school, yada, yada, yada. But there's plenty in there that um, is geared towards going out in the winter and some tips for that, like how to dress uh, for the winter and what kind of farts you might want to invest in. Um, it might sound strange, but if you invest in high quality um, outdoor uh, coats and whatnot for children, it can help extend the time that they're outdoors. So there's some information about that too for safety, but winter is a great time to buy the book because there are plenty of activities that traditionally um, many people groups have done outdoors during the winter. So buy it in the winter too. <laughs> yes. Now yeah. in the second book, are you going to have a segment in there about how to build igloos in the winter time because I would be very interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. So you asked about the second book. You're right. I need to touch on that. So the second book, this book is focused on a catalog for adolescents of, like I said, from birth to adulthood, you know, that while they're growing up, um, because activities for the outdoors for children under the age of five are very popular and also very difficult to um, access information about in, in the way, in a very detailed way. I'm creating a book that will hone in on that experience before kindergarten in a way that will um, really help the um, intellectual growth of, of children under five. So I'm very excited about this. My, um, target date is fall of 2023, so look for it, and yeah, we could do an interview on that next year. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to hold that to you, uh, hold you to that, so I hope you're prepared. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all there, right. That's all the questions that I had that I really wanted to home in on. Is there anything you can think of that I wasn't smart enough to ask? Mm, I think uh, that's good. I think that really covers um, why I wrote the book, who's it for, what you're going to find in there, et cetera. So I, I feel confident that, um, you know, people seeing this interview will understand it. Yeah. Just remember right. juvenescenceoutdoors.com. The yeah. book is juvenescenceoutdoors.com. The book is called Juvenescence Outdoors. You are Melinda Scott yes. and I am Stephen Andrew Boland. Yes. And this is the Proverbs 2717 YouTube channel. And it has been an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. I just wanted to take an extra minute with you guys and to say to you, if there's something in this episode that has touched you and you've realized that you don't have a personal relationship with our Savior Christ Jesus and you want to know more about that or you need prayer or just godly counseling, you can reach out to me. I'm going to put my Facebook information in the link down at the very bottom and my email address. And anytime you need prayer, anytime you just need fellowship, uh, if you want me to walk you through the prayer of salvation and help you uh, learn ways that you can develop your relationship with Christ Jesus, I would be absolutely honored to do that for you. Uh, and I, I want you to know that you will never be bothering me. It doesn't matter if I have a thousand things going on. When it comes to your relationship with our Christ, uh, I will drop it all for you. Um, and I really mean that. So look for that in the description if you need that kind of you need that kind of fellowship. And I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.